Hey, welcome back. I'm Kelly from Signature Solar, and today we're diving into some of the most frequently asked questions about our EG4 mini splits. Whether you're interested in our electric only or hybrid solar models, we've got answers that will help you make the best decision for your cooling and heating needs. Here at Signature Solar, we offer four versions of the EG4 mini split. The 9K Extreme Efficiency Standard Electric Only, the 12K Extreme Efficiency Standard Electric Only, the 12K Hybrid Solar, and the 24K Hybrid Solar Mini Splits. These units are designed to enhance your comfort and lifestyle, providing efficient heating and cooling solutions. There's a lot to cover, so let's explore what makes these units a great choice for your home. We'll start with a fundamental question. What is a mini split and how does it work? Simply put, a mini split is a type of air conditioner that can both cool and heat your home. It consists of two main components. An indoor unit that blows conditioned air into the living space and an outdoor unit that removes heat from the room. The two units are connected by refrigerant lines and electrical wiring. Basically, let's say you have your indoor unit, right? Then you'll have your outdoor unit and you got your line set. So basically, this is inside the house. So what you're doing is taking the heat from inside the room and you're taking it and you're pumping it outside. And that all takes, flat, uh, takes place through the gas exchange or the heat exchange from all your refrigerants. So you're taking all the heat in here, say you want this one 70 degrees in here and it's 80, it, the refrigerant takes that uh, heat, displaces it, and then pumps it out here. So basically it's just a heat pump. You're taking heat from one place and putting it in another. It's all you're doing. And I've heard over the years, you know, all this global warming stuff, you know, and all these air conditioners always running, putting all this heat. Actually, it's not true. We're just taking heat from one place and putting it in another. So it's kind of cool. I've, <clears throat> got my HVAC degree several years ago, and I just thought it was really neat how all this stupid stuff worked, but <laughs> it is kind of cool. But anyways, that's all that is. So you're basically going to be do taking that, and you'll also see uh, condensation. So the moisture in the air contains heat, and what that is is latent heat. I'm not going to go into a lot of stuff on that, but every uh, water molecule contains heat. So you get rid of the moisture out of the air. You therefore drop the temperature. And a lot of times you can uh, raise the temperature, remove the humidity, and it'll still feel like it's like, say, 70 degrees with like a 30% humidity, whereas 70, 75 and like 80% humidity, you're gonna be like just miserable. So you'll be getting all, that's a big, that's another big part of what this unit does. So this, you'll see that this has a condensate line that'll come out once we'll show you how to put that in on the on the head unit and it collects all the moisture in the room and just dumps it outside now basically I've heard tell I don't know if it's true but that's pretty that's just air right the water in the air so it's pretty pure people say oh you can drink that I don't know I wouldn't do it but I've heard tell you can <laughs> you know I collect mine on my shop I have a couple of these units on my shop and I collect the rainwater or the condensate from my units for you know, washing hand towels or whatever when I'm working on my motorcycle or something. But uh, it's really clean, it's really clear too, it's really cool. What is the difference between a central AC unit and a mini split and why would I choose one over the other? Central AC units typically cool the entire house through a network of ducts, while mini splits allow for zone cooling, meaning you can cool individual rooms. Mini splits are a more versatile, easier to install, and often more energy efficient, making them a great choice for homes without existing ductwork or for targeted cooling. Next up, do mini splits use a lot of electricity for heat? Not really. Mini splits use the same amount of energy to heat as they do to cool, thanks to their efficient heat pump technology. Unlike traditional systems, Mini splits don't rely on electric heat strips, which are known to consume a lot of electricity. Instead, they transfer heat, making them much more energy efficient. For example, 
Our 12K unit has a CR2 rating of 28.5, meaning it uses less electricity compared to traditional systems. Plus, our hybrid solar models can significantly cut down on your electricity use by leveraging solar power. Our next question is, what are the differences between the four units? To answer this, let's refer back to our previous video where we worked with a 12K standard electric only unit. The 9K units have the same accessories and look exactly the same. Now, our hybrid solar units, 12K and 24K, also come with the same accessories, including the pre-charged line sets, which keeps the installation simple. The only difference is that you would need to purchase your solar panels separately to tie into these units. For our hybrid solar mini splits, the maximum voltage from your PV array should be less than 380 volts with a minimum input of 90 volts DC. The 12K unit requires a rated PV wattage of 1100 watts, while the 12K unit needs 2200 watts. The 12K unit is a one ton system similar to our standard model, and the 24K unit is a two ton system. How is the standard unit different from the solar hybrid unit? The primary difference lies in their power sources. The standard electric units run solely on AC power, while the hybrid solar units can switch between solar power and AC power. This flexibility allows the hybrid solar units to utilize solar energy during the day and AC power at night or on cloudy days, optimizing energy use and savings. In our hybrid solar units, we have the 12K one ton unit and the 24K two ton unit. What sets these air conditioning systems apart is their AC-DC hybrid power inputs. Harness the sun's energy directly through MC4 connectors attached to the outside unit. On sunny days, your energy savings can reach up to 100% when utilizing solar inputs. By connecting your unit to PV modules and plugging it into your home outlets, your mini split can effortlessly transition between the power sources. This enables smooth operation during nighttime hours or when solar power is insufficient. Utilizing home electricity only when needed, this hybrid solar mini split presents a highly economical solution for heating and cooling your residence. What does it mean that these are extreme efficient? Our extreme efficiency mini splits are designed to maximize energy savings. With high CR2 ratings, these units use less electricity to provide the same amount of cooling or heating, which means lower energy bills for you. The 9K unit boasts a CR2 rating of 29.5, and the 12K unit has a CR2 rating of 28.5. Let's take a closer look at this. Let me show you how to match a unit to your room square footage. This part is crucial for maximizing efficiency. So let's take a closer look at what BTU means and how it relates to each of our units. BTU is an acronym that stands for British Thermal Unit, a measurement of how much energy an air conditioner uses to remove heat from indoor air. BTU typically shows how much heat an air conditioner can remove within one hour. If your air conditioner has too many BTUs for your home size, your energy cost could increase. However, an AC unit with too few BTUs may not properly cool your home. Understanding BTU can be the key to choosing the right air conditioning system to keep you comfortable while making sure your energy bills stay affordable. Our 9K and 12K units deliver over 9,000 BTU and 12,000 BTU, perfect for smaller to medium spaces, 500 to 650 square feet respectively. Need something more robust? The Solar 24K gives you a whopping 24,000 BTU, which is ideal for larger rooms up to 1,350 square feet. You can even have multiple units for larger spaces such as workshops or warehouses. As we begin to dig deeper into how to choose the right cooling unit for our home, we must also consider the SEER ratings. The higher the SEER rating, the higher cooling efficiency of your unit, which signifies the lower your bill should be. Our mini splits have the new SEER 2 rating, so let's talk about what that means. 
SEER 2 stands for Seasonal Energy Efficiency Ratio 2. Starting from January 1st, 2023, these SEER 2 ratings are used instead of the older SEER ratings. SEER 2 helps us measure how well air conditioners and heat pumps work. The SEER 2 test is tougher and more like real life conditions, so the results it gives are more precise. Because of this, the efficiency numbers you get from SEER 2 testing might be lower compared to the old SEER testing. It's like giving a more accurate report card for how well these machines use energy. Specifically, SEER 2 is the total heat removed from the conditioned space during the annual cooling season. The higher the SEER 2 rating, the more efficient the unit. Technical details matter. Running on 115 volt AC, efficiency takes center stage. The 9K and 12K units crush the competition with their SEER 2 ratings. The 9K boasts an impressive SEER 2 rating of 29.5, while the 12K is very close with a SEER 2 of 28.5. These units aren't just keeping you comfortable, they're saving you energy and money. The hybrid solar units also come with their own ratings of 22 for the 12K and 21 for the 24K, both exceeding industry standards. Remember, the higher the SEER 2, the lower your bills. So to summarize, the key differences are in their BTU ratings, power sources, and energy efficiency. The standard units are electric only, while the hybrid units can switch between solar and AC power, offering greater flexibility and potential energy savings. So to choose the right unit, first determine the size of the space you want to cool or heat. For smaller spaces up to 500 square feet, the 9K unit is ideal. For medium spaces up to 650 square feet, go for the 12K unit. And for larger spaces up to 1,350 square feet, the 24K unit will be your best bet. Remember, choosing the right size ensures maximum efficiency and comfort. Our final question is one we hear a lot. How many solar panels do I need for a 12,000 BTU mini split? <laughs> Great question. For a 12K hybrid solar mini split, you'll need about four to six solar panels depending on their wattage. Typically, panels rated at 300 to 350 watts each will suffice. This ensures your unit can run efficiently using solar power during the day. Similarly, for the 24K unit, you'll typically need about eight to 10 solar panels with the same 300 to 350 wattage rating. This, of course, is a broad statement. All PV modules have different ratings and specifications. Make sure to match your modules according to the PV input ratings, according to the specific unit specs listed on the spec sheet. Now let's talk a bit about the refrigerants used in our current EG4 mini splits. Our units use R410A, which replaced the older R22 refrigerant. R22 was phased out because it contained chlorine, which depletes the ozone layer. R410A was developed as a chlorine-free option, more environmental friendly alternative to R22, and offers better efficiency. To give us more insight into the refrigerant background and what our current units use today, here's Mike to tell us all about it. You hear so many different rumors about, oh, we got global warming going on because all these air conditioners are pumping all this heat into the atmosphere, which is not true. So basically, uh, and these, these units that we sell have a, uh, what's called a 410A refrigerant. So this is gonna be phased out by the end of 2024. The EPA is, or 20, excuse me, January 2025. What's happening there is they're doing away uh, with a lot of uh, global warming uh, refrigerants. So they adopted the Montreal Protocol back in 1995, and it's an agreement to get rid of certain refrigerants. Now, a bunch of the refrigerants back then contained chlorine. One chlorine atom can destroy 100,000 ozone uh, atoms in the atmosphere. So hence we've got the uh, uh, you know the loss, crop loss, and everything else. We're we're not blocking the UV rays because we got a hole in the ozone and it's been tied to the chlorine, 
that's in refrigerants. So they're doing away with those. Those are HCFCs, I believe, and CFCs. And then we got the HFCs, which is this one, has a GWP, which is a global warming potential. So it's better on the environment, but it produces carbon monoxide. So when it's released into the deal, uh, into the atmosphere. So just want to give a little background on that. Wikipedia is really good. It's pretty good on some of this stuff. You know, I could have wrote all this, but I was like, hey, this works. So uh, if you're curious about it, you can read about it right down here. History. Uh, uh, I'll, yeah, the Montreal po Protocol there, you know, de depleting the ozone and all that stuff is not good. It's not a good thing. You get skin cancer, crop loss is happening. Uh, marine biology has actually decreased it too because of uh, the depletion of the ozone, which is taking place from a lot of these refrigerants that were way back in the 70s and so forth. One of the standout features and benefits of our mini splits is the Quick Connect pre-charged line sets. This innovation minimizes refrigerant release during installation, adhering to EPA regulations on de minimis release, and ensures that you don't need a licensed HVAC technician to install the line set. In fact, Mike was very impressed when he disconnected this unit for his next installer training session and he found there was zero refrigerant release. It's a simple DIY friendly and environmentally safe setup that makes installation quick and easy. Now, let's walk through the basic installation process to show you just how simple it is. We'll start with the indoor unit. Remember, our goal is to make this as straightforward as possible so you can get your unit up and running in no time. We'll highlight some key steps and parts here, but if you want to see the installation in more detail, check out our previous installation video linked in the description. First, gather your tools. You'll find a list of almost everything you'll need on page seven of the manual. Additionally, be sure to get a torque wrench, which isn't on the list, but is necessary to ensure your system operates efficiently and remains leak free. Begin by selecting a suitable location for the indoor unit. It should offer excellent airflow, easy access for drainage, be at least three feet away from other electronic devices and be able to support the weight of the unit. Next, attach the mounting plate to the wall. EG4 has now made this easier than ever. Besides including everything you need for your install to make this as simple as possible, they now even include a mounting template for placing your bracket. The only thing you need to do is consider your clearance. Make sure it's at least 15 centimeters from the ceiling and allows for 12 centimeters clearance on each side. Use a level to ensure it's perfectly horizontal before drilling your pilot holes and securing the plate with screws. You might wonder why the template has so many places to drill holes and wonder, do I need to use all of these? Mike answers this question for us. Oh, okay. So you've got different placements. You've got all these different hole patterns right here. Let's say your stud lands right here, okay? Or your stud lines right here. You know, you've got different anchor points that you can choose from to try and anchor this thing to a wall stud. So, mm. yes. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, it really doesn't matter and you know, You've got all these to choose from. That thing only weighs, what, 15, 20 pounds? It's so light. Once the mounting plate is secured, drill the wall hole for the connective piping. When you do do these, you want to try and go at an angle. And it's kind of hard to do because you think about it, look how thick. This wall, this is typically how thick a, a wall is in a house, you know? So it's going to be kind of hard to get, you know, your first one can get through and drilling the hole at an angle. All this stuff is pointing downhill outside the building. So that's gonna help get rid of any moisture that does collect on here and shoot it out. The next step is to prepare all of our piping and hoses to be fed through the hole in the wall. Mike has some important tips that we should pay attention to for this part of the installation. It, it kind of makes everybody nervous because these line sets, they are copper. You can see them in here and you can kink these. So putting these, you got to be do it in such a manner that you're very careful. So basically, we're just going to just kind of work them really slow 
just real easy so we don't kink them. Watch this. Watch me do it. <laughs> you want to get them straight out, just like so. Okay? Are they repairable if you kink them? No. <laughs> there is no replacements. There is no nothing So is at this point. And another thing we're, we're going to also do is we're going to move this drain line from over here to over here. You'll look down in here. You'll see this little cork right down in here. Everybody go look at the cork. So you got a little cork right here. We're just going to remove that. We got to hang on to it because it will go over here once we get this one off. What happens if we don't reinstall the cork line? Then we're going to have water in the wall. Very cool. Yes. Yeah. We'll have water draining down our wall. We'll get mold. We'll get all that good stuff. So. Hang on to your little stopper, and then we're gonna remove this dude over here. I've gotta get my glasses on, actually, so I can see. There we go, that's much better. If you look in here, there's a little clip that uh, clamps this on, and, and see right there, it's clipped onto the, the, you'll twist that dude a little bit, and unlock it off of there, and work that off. You can see how that clip is on there? There's a little uh, stub right there on the side. I see what it looked like. Yep. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Reinsert. Where are we inserting it to, Mike? On the other drain line, we just removed the clip, the uh, uh, plug from. It's a spring clamp, is all it is, and then it's got an extra hook that hooks around a stub on this drain shaft right here, drain tube, excuse me, and uh, it just locks it in there and keeps you from being able to pull that thing out when you're putting it on. And then we'll just put this dude right back in on this side, working it in very careful. You don't want to poke it, poke a hole in it because you'll have a leak and you don't want that at all. A little patience, get that thing in there. And this is a friction fit, so it's rubber. It won't come out if you get it all the way in there properly, so you don't have to put any sealant on it or anything like that. Uh, a lot of times people will put sealant on, say, these threads right here. Uh, that's a big no-no. I've seen a bunch of our units come back, and they all leaked, okay? People went, oh, threads. They'll put Teflon tape on there. They'll put some kind of uh, thread sealant on there. That's a big no-no for refrigerant lines. That stuff reacts with the refrigerant, could cause this stuff to corrode, then you got a leak. These have uh, uh, an O-ring system that's specially designed to handle the, the different chemicals and all the properties in your uh, uh, refrigerant. The next step is to open the wire box cover on the front of the indoor unit and connect the signal cable. This is as easy as matching colors, and numbers. So the wire's got to feed in from underneath here. Everything is numbered, one, two, three. And if you look on your wires, they're all numbered. <laughs> so it's literally one, two, and three. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. We'll connect those to the corresponding screws labeled one, two, three, and ground. Make sure they're all snugly secured. And then we'll take our ground. Okay, just give those a little tug to make sure that they're all really secure. We've got our brown wire going to our number one terminal, our blue wire, which is also labeled number two, going to the number two terminal, our black wire, which is labeled number three, is going to our number three terminal, and our green yellow wire going to our ground lug. We'll go ahead and replace our wire clamp. And now we can replace our terminal cover. Time to bundle the refrigerant piping, drain hose, and signal cable together to pass through the wall hole and mount the unit on the bracket. We'll tape all this together. Perfect. This, this one will end up coming off, but it'll be okay. We can take it off once it's through the wall mm -hmm. just to help guide us. Slow and easy. <clears throat> Lift up. Yep. That's it. Push it on. <laughs> <laughs>
The line set holding it. There you go. There, there. And that's it. Now we'll just dismantle all this, get this tape off of here, because what we're going to do now is we're going to have to work these down. And uh, once again, without kinking them. And this is where you can also use the uh, uh, flange that comes in the kit. These come uh, apart, just snap, snap apart like so. And you can actually, you can see how that goes on there. You fit them in there and just snap back together. And that gives you a clean, kind of cleans up your hole, makes it a lot nicer. And then this is, this is also, once you get these bent down into position, you can take your putty and fill in all around there and fill in any gaps to keep any critters out of your wall and so forth. Now let's move on to the outdoor unit. Make sure and choose a location with good air circulation, protection from the elements, and space for the unit to operate efficiently. It can be mounted on the ground or on a bracket. Mike has some good tips about mounting options and ways to keep your outdoor unit operating efficiently. These right here, uh, come with all the hardware you need to anchor into uh, brick or uh, like a wood siding or so forth. So that's, that's pretty neat. And it also gives you the offset away from the wall. These things cannot be up against the wall because it can't breathe. You've got to have a little clearance behind there so you can suck air in and move air across all them coils. That's another key factor. This is your outdoor unit. So if you do notice a lot of vibration in this, you could have a mud dauber nest build up on the fan blade. Uh, let's say you got a bunch of little kids around that like to poke stuff with sticks. That's running, they stick a stick in there or anything, could bust the fan blade, causing it to be off balance. And you'll get a lot of vibration out of this unit when that happens. So that's something, so somebody calls and say, ah oh, man, that thing sounds like it's about to come off the wall. Have them turn the unit off and inspect the fan and make sure it's all in good shape. I've done had this problem. Mine sat up over winter. Uh, my dauber did build a nest on one of the fan blades. I was like, man, that thing sure is loud. So I had to go out there and take this off and get that mud dauber nest off of there. And uh, fired up and ran and it's all good. If you ever notice that your air conditioner unit, people that have uh, dogs, you go out there and you'll see these coils all eat up. That's from your pet uh, relieving itself. <laughs> I don't know how to put that any nicer, but they have a tendency to, to, and this is aluminum, and it will get eat up by that. And that's, yeah, it's not very good. So if you can get these things up where they can't get to them, that's even better. For ground installation, secure the unit on a level pad. If you're using a bracket, make sure it's strong enough to support the unit's weight. The wall bracket that you'll see Mike's group using can be found on our website. We'll put the link in the description below. Also, once on the bracket, don't forget the drain joint and hose. Next, connect the power supply and signal cables to the outdoor unit. Be sure to check the manual for the recommended wire size and breaker specifications to follow proper and safe installation guidelines. Now it's time to connect the refrigerant piping. The quick connect tubing ensures leak-free connections. Carefully bend the tubing to avoid kinks and connect the pipes to both the indoor and outdoor units. Finally, open the valve on the outdoor unit to release the refrigerant and check for leaks. So what will happen is that if that doesn't seat good, you could get some leakage there. So you back seat it. Ready? Hold on to it. Yeah, yeah just hold on. Go a little bit more. There you go. That's all you got to do. Okay. Not that much. We'll put these on. These really need to be torqued on, or not necessarily torqued on, but they do need to be snug because this is another leak prevention area right here where you could possibly have a leak. If these are on there properly and snug, then that should eliminate any possible leaks of that valve not being back seated properly. You're getting so close to having a running unit. If you have a hybrid solar unit, 
you will find a couple of PV wires with MC4 connectors inside your outdoor wiring box. These connectors are designed to make the connection between your solar panels and the unit straightforward and reliable. These wires would have been found neatly coiled up inside your unit. You would just need to pull them out of the wire box to prepare to connect to your array. So simple. These PV wires are equipped with MC4 connectors, which are standard in the solar industry for simple and dependable connections. To connect your PV array to the unit, simply match the positive and negative MC4 connectors from your solar panels to those on the unit's PV wires. Once connected, make sure the connections are secure. The MC4 connectors will click into place, forming a tight seal that prevents moisture and dust from entering. With these connections made, your hybrid solar unit is ready to harness the sun's energy, maximizing efficiency and saving you money on electricity bills. To see more detailed steps on the installation process, check out our full installation video linked in the description. Thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment if you found this video helpful or have any questions. Explore more on our website at SignatureSolar.com and let us help you find the perfect mini split or mini split kit for your needs. I'm Kelly with Signature Solar, where we believe that solar is for everyone. We'll see you next time.